So these are my beginning chemicals that I'll be using today in what will be known as the direct method for making Prussian blue. So what that will involve is essentially making up a diluted solution of a ferricyanide or potassium ferricyanide and co-precipitating that with a ferric chloride solution. Um, over here I have some iron filings because I need to reduce my ferric chloride to ferrous chloride in order to work with the ferricyanide or the potassium ferricyanide. If I had potassium ferrocyanide then I could mix it just directly with this without having to reduce it. But these are the chemicals that we have and this is the way we should be working. We also have a small one and a half mils of hydrochloric acid which will be added to this. So first step will be to reduce my ferric chloride to ferrous chloride. So I have mixed here five grams which will go into my beaker here and will be mixed with 20 mils of 60 degree water which I have been heating up over here on the side which needs to be stirred until we have a good solution and to that we will add our iron filings And we should probably put that onto the stir plate over here. Drop in a little stir bar and get that going. What I'm looking for over here is a bit of a change in colour to a more greenish colour which we will I'll give it a few minutes. So while that's going on, we'll take and dissolve our potassium ferricyanide. And for that, we're going to be doing it into 500 mils of, uh, 50 mils, sorry, of 60 degree water. Which I shall stir again, like so. Just looking for all of the crystals to dissolve into a nice solution. Which you can see there. It's done very simply. So we'll set that to the side. We will also add to that our 1.5 mils of hydrochloric acid. This has been on the little stir plate for a while and so far it's a bit hard to see on the video but it has started to turn from sort of a brownie kind of color to a bit more of a sort of swampy sort of green color which sort of suggests to me that some of the iron filings has reacted with the ferric chloride and has reduced it to ferrous chloride so all I'm gonna do is probably just give this a quick filter to get all those little iron filings out and we shall then move on to the next step. So this is the apparatus I've designed for doing the co-precipitation of the pigment. So what we have here on one side in the big one is the separatory funnel with the potassium ferricyanide solution in there. And then here we have a very small 
participatory funnel style thing that I picked up from a flea market in Paris last year, which is a cool little find. Um, and this has the ferrous cyanide. And what I'm going to do is drip the two into a warm solution of water that is being stirred current, uh, constantly. And hopefully we should see a blue precipitate form pretty much immediately. So, here we go. So here we have the two precipitates that I did. The one on the left in the beaker is the co-precipitation method, which turned out to be quite fine in pigment particle size. So it's almost like a big sort of blue ink. And the one on the right in the test tube was just precipitating the potassium ferrocyanide directly into the ferric chloride or ferrous chloride which resulted in larger pigment size now i've moved on to filtering so i'm just sort of passing the pigment into a funnel here with some filter paper to try and filter it all out i've been filtering for close to an hour or so now and the pigment particles are so fine that they're sort of just dropping through the filters. I've tried vacuum filtering and that doesn't seem to work, just good old fashioned slow gravity filtering. So if we just head outside I can show you some of the pigment drying. It's the pigments as they're drying in the sun here. I'm trying to get as much of the moisture out as I can. Oh, and now we get blue pigment everywhere. Here I ended up just pouring a bunch of the pigment out onto a big sort of plastic dish just to see if I could dry it out a little bit quicker this way or evaporate some of the water and just ended up realizing that it sort of created this really interesting blue mirror which I just thought looked really cool. So here are the pigments after the filter paper has been dried in the sun for uh, since yesterday and you can see it's crazy how Prussian blue has this sort of like purplish metallic sort of sheen to its surface so what I'm going to do now is just carefully scrape off the pigment from the filter paper into a mortar and pestle so I've got my little pestle here and I'm just going to grind down the pigment and we'll be able to assess it from there 
So once all the pigment is into the modern pestle, I'm just going to give it a quick grind. So I've just taken the pigment outside here so you can get a better look at it. And as you can see, it's an incredibly deep, sort of dark purplish hue blue, which, you know, I'm quite happy with, to be honest. I'm going to compare it to some commercially bought Prussian blue pigment, as well as a previous Prussian blue attempt to see if there's any differences. Uh, I'm still drying the direct precipitation one to see if there's a difference in that as well. I have a little bit of linseed oil here, which I'm going to mix in with pigment, and then I'm going to start mixing with some white just so we can start to see the like gradation of tone and the kinds of blues that it makes. Because you know, as a straight pigment Prussian blue tends to be almost too dark unless you want to kind of use it as like a pseudo black. Now normally if I was mixing up an oil paint I'd use a proper moolah to do so but just because this is a little test I'm just using a palette knife. I can already tell that the pigment particles as fine as they are aren't quite fine enough. It would need a fair amount of grinding. The other trick with mixing up oil paints is not to use too much oil. So I'll set that to the side and what I'll do is just clean off our area. Now I'm going to pick up just a little bit of white and you can see already the pigment is strong and wants to make quite a decent sort of sky blue sort of colour there. I'll just spread it out so you can see. Let's add a little bit more of the pigment in just so we can see the transitions.
So there you have it. Nice transition from almost a black blue color, like a midnighty sort of color, through to some sort of mm, these are almost sort of like a evening sky sort of color. I feel like this, you know, I find a lot of use for really dark blues in my painting. I kind of like to mix them with browns um, to make my blacks. Um, so yeah, overall I'm pretty happy with the result of that. I'll probably do a bit more testing, process up the other pigment that I made, um, maybe grind this a little bit more, and I'll also give it a try in tempera. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for the next episode.